What company will never see another dime of your money? Verizon. TLDR. They shafted and wrecked the credit of a loyal 7 year customer. I had my wireless account with them for 7 years. I opened the account when I was 18 and had to put down a cash deposit because I had no credit history at the time. So 7 years later I called them to cancel my account. The company I got hired by provided a phone and data plan. So I joined that instead. When I called them. It was 3 days before the 7th year ran out. I informed the rep that I would not be renewing and wanted to close the account on the expiration date. They said oh. Sorry to see you go. You were a loyal customer for 7 years so we'll take care of this and there won't be any early termination fee since you're right at the end of your contract. Great. I was also informed I'd be mailed a check with my deposit return. So the account is cancelled. No more bills. I go on my merry way. A year later I check my credit report and see that my scores have taken a nosedive. These suckers charged a $500 early termination fee on the account, which consumed my initial deposit and placed the account $300 in the red. They then sent the account straight to a collections firm. They did this all on the same day I called to cancel. Not once did I get a phone call or email saying that I owed money on the account. I then had to fight with them and the credit bureaus for 8 months. They ended up just writing off the debt. I never got my deposit back, and it took months to get the negative information off my credit report. Planet Fitness. I tried to cancel my gym membership when I had cancer and was housebound. They insisted I come in person or send a certified letter. I told them I couldn't leave the house and that they could speak with my oncology office if they needed proof. They didn't care. I cancelled the bank account so they couldn't withdraw another penny. I was OP. This. My brother passed away so I went to cancel his membership. Brought death certificate. It didn't such. They were like no P has to come in person this was from the mouth of the manager there. I can only fass a pum and leave. Had the bank put a hold on all charges. Hertz car rental. My rental car's tire popped out of the blue whilst I was driving through Germany. They acknowledged that it was not my fault and I was not charged, but I was charged for the damage that a popping tire caused to the body of the car despite it being a direct consequence. They took my money without my consent and then refused to pay me back. Luckily it was for a work trip so I didn't need to worry and was compensated, but still. Frick hurts. Adobe. Their creative cloud subscription was $49.95 a month. After I signed up they kept increasing the price every month. When it got close to $75 a month I cancelled. Now they are trying to sell it to me for $49.95 again. Adobe software is very easy to pirate. Frick em. Bob's Discount Furniture. I paid extra $150 for them to remove my old mattress. Apparently, all I paid for was for them to move my old mattress to the curb. A 2 hour phone call later, and they came back the next day to get it. XM Sirius Radio. You can sign up in seconds, but cannot cancel your service online. I had a family account, and we had ended up selling a couple cars, so we obviously did not want to pay for those cars anymore. You have to call to cancel. Complete bulls. Anyways, I still had one radio that I wanted to keep. However, I kept getting hung up on. So I googled it. 273,000 complaints about getting hung up on. Bro. So, the next call. I said I am not recording you, but I am recording myself attempting to cancel my radios. They will hang up on you if you tell them you are recording them. It took 40 minutes per radio to cancel. So I said fine. Cancel the other one, too. Which is upsetting BC I love the service, but I can't give money to a company like that. Thanks for the heads up. We had it free for 6 months when I bought my new car. Now we're getting offers to purchase the service. They just lost a potential customer thanks to how they treated you and 273,000 others. Any company that advertises with loud, auto-playing ads on websites, or any company that uses the oh the page just loaded. Here is the link you wanted. Ah and it's replaced with a spam link the moment before you click it. I am curious who actually ends up buying the product they want to sell you. Like, this web page hijacking or obnoxious sounds are usually the biggest turn off. Legit reason why I started using reddit and update for news is no video autoplay when I read the summary. 
Bank of Scotland kept me in debt for a year by changing their student overdraft policy from what they promised me when I signed up. Then a year later when I was finally out of debt, they changed it back. It was like they were specifically fricking me over. Frick you HBOS. Never again. Aria, a UK computer store. I bought a mouse a couple years ago, but they never shipped it. Every time I emailed, they ignored me. I was writing really whitey and clever messages too. Made the suggestion of sending something different if they didn't have the stock. Nope. I get an email with just one line this has been refunded. So I emailed back. I mean, WTF. And I was ignored. For two more weeks. I left a scathing review on Trustpilot, which they suppressed. So I sent an incredibly crappy email. Finally I got a call from one of their sales reps. As an apology, they would give me £10 off my next order. Having spent more than £3k with them over the previous couple of years, I took this as an insult. I now share my experience whenever I can, to make sure people avoid their absolute crap service. Expedia allowed a stranger to use my account to book a flight for yet another stranger. They paid with their own money and everything. But I got emails about my flight and I called Expedia to find out WTF. They told me everything about the people who used my account. And I confirmed none of them were actually me. They said okay they would handle it and hung up. That should have been the end of it. Two days later, I get a call from a very angry stranger who wanted me to explain to him why I had cancelled his flight. Apparently the dude who had a ticket purchased for him went to the airport and they said no ticket. He called Expedia, and they told him Darth Corleone cancelled your ticket. Want his number? He did want my number, so they gave it to him. He called me and yelled until I explained that I had not cancelled anything. Simply informed Expedia that I had not ordered a flight from Tampa to NYC. He eventually calmed down, but now I know that a man in Tampa, 3 hours away, is mad at me, has my name, had my address and has my phone number. Neat. Obviously I was P, and still am P. I let Expedia know about it and they asked me what do you want no apologies, no explanation, just straight up what will it take to shut you up over this? I told them a round trip ticket to see the world would not excuse what they did, and they counted with $100 off. Not $20, as originally reported in error. My next purchase with Expedia. I'll never use them, or any of their companies again. I routinely tweet at them when I buy travel to let them know how much I spent and that it wasn't through them. They usually ask me to DM and then I get to explain what happened to yet another disinterested CS rep. One of them finally apologized after I complained that they never even apologized after putting me in that kind of danger. TL. Doctor. Don't use Expedia unless you are okay with them blaming you for their frick ups and handing out your name, address and phone number to the angry customers they screwed. I think I will go tweet at them again. It's been a while, and I just bought a cruise. Frick Expedia. Victoria's Secret. Their stuff has gotten crappier and crappier, and their in-store shopping experience is a nightmare. I can't stand the sales associates. Agree. It used to be expensive because it was quality merchandise. Now you're just paying for the name and the stuff doesn't last any longer than the stuff you get at Target. Bank of America. I closed my account 2006-ish. I got one of those poor fees when I was in college. I resolved that if this was how they treated me when I was poor then they clearly didn't want my money when I had a proper post-college job. Wafer. I've never had such a horrific consumer experience. My husband and I were in the midst of buying a house last October so I signed up for Wafer's dinky credit card as a way to buy some stuff interest free for 6 months. I ended up spending around $435. A few weeks after I received my items, I logged into my online account to make a payment on my credit card and see that while my available credit is $65, my balance is zero and I have nothing due. I call Wafer. They have no idea what I'm talking about and don't believe me at first, until finally I'm told there was a hold on my order somewhere in the system that wasn't releasing the charge to the credit card bank. I'm told it's released and nothing changed. I call the bank. They say it's still an issue on Wafer's end. After weeks and hours wasted on the phone with both companies, I end up on a conference call with both Wafer and the bank and learn that neither entity has any clue what is going on but the hold on my order was going to remain in place on the 22nd of March. 
2018. I literally could do nothing until then. The bank representative put in a credit dispute to see if that would speed up the release but nothing happened. Last month, I log in to finally make a payment and see that my full balance is available. I have nothing due, and there's an option to close my account so I did. The next day, Wafer sends me a threatening email and letter saying they've been trying to contact me for months, lies, and are going to report this to the credit agencies. Let me tell you, I lost my freaking mind. I called up Wafer and raised unholy heck to someone. It wasn't that I didn't want to pay for my order, it was that this had been ongoing for over half a year at this point with no further communication on their part. I told them I want a payment plan, and I was refused because of the credit dispute that Community Bank did to try and help me, and the CS executive I spoke to refused to believe me when I told him the situation. Eventually, after 20 minutes, he finally decides to review my account notes and offers me the chance to pay one stroke three of the balance and they would eat the remainder. I immediately gave them my payment info and, months later and hours wasted, I'm finally done with wafer. Frick them. I freaking hate them and wish nothing more than for them to fold. Their jingles are annoying as frick too. Ikea. Precursor. Legally blind. I had just finished training with my first guide dog, and was still pretty anxious about leaving my mobility in her hands. Cue desire for affordable furniture puzzles. I decided with my guide I could test the limits of my independence, so we pop on down to the horse meatball factory. I can't remember what I'm looking for, I don't leave with anything. I figure it's a pretty straightforward path, it'll help me build trust. We are doing fine just following the marketer's think tank floor plan, but I do notice someone is following quite close behind. I can see a little, enough to know they be creeping. Without a word the leash is snatched from my hand, but I've still got the handle attached to her harness. We are both then dragged off path, and immediately confronted by a yellow and blue striped woman. I'm pretty disoriented, it happened quickly and I definitely wasn't trained for this. She asks me why I think I can just bring my pet into the store, and tells me security is on the way. I try explaining the obvious, this is a Labrador in high vis harness behaving as if she were professionally trained. I show her the medallion on her collar from guide dogs. All futile, she refuses to let go of the leash. Security arrives and, separately I might add, my guide and I are escorted out. I just sat outside and cried. Guide dogs have procedures in this event. They employ someone whose entire job is to educate organizations about our rights and their obligations to comply with guide and assistance animal legislation. It wasn't that comforting at the time. I have since had similar experiences. Cabs driving off when they see us waiting. Restaurants asking me to tie her up outside or eat elsewhere. But this first encounter with ignorance really got to me. I will never return to IKEA. That is a lawsuit. They broke several laws and discriminated. Sorry that happened. Hope all is well. Holiday Inn. Some friends and I booked a room for a few nights for a convention. I put the room under my name card. When I got the bill, I saw an extra $250 on it. I called and asked why and they reported there were room damages everywhere inside and the number plate was missing in the hallway from our room. I told them we cleaned the room as best as we could before leaving and didn't break anything but they were adamant we did. They checked their records and told me their apologies and it was the room across the hall from us that had the inside damages. I then saw deposit for only half my money back. Hopped on the phone and asked what gives they said since the number plate from our room was still missing. Fear going to charge me half. At this point, I am so fed up. I say frick it and take the L. Between my friends and I, we didn't pay too much for that but it's still obnoxious it happened. We nearly went to small claims court against them but figured it wasn't worth the effort. Haven stepped into a holiday and since. Tweet about your experience and make sure to tag them. Geico car insurance. I was rear-ended in traffic one day and the other car had expired insurance. I reported the accident to Geico and they said they would cover it but I'd have to pay $500. I guess that's normal for the plan I had. But here's the kicker. My insurance jumped from $86 mo to $450 mo. Who can afford that? I called Geico to get the situation sorted and all they told me is that Texas insurance increased by 11% this year. Well, 
You don't have to be a mathematician to see that was way more than an 11% jump. They assured me my new rate was not a mistake. I had been with Geico for over 12 years and that's how it's going to be. Needless to say, I jumped ship to another insurance company, AAA, for $120 mo, and I've been pretty happy with them. When I called Geico to cancel with them they told me they can get me down to $86 mo. By then it was too late. I told them I tried getting the balk rate resolved but they treated me like an idiot. I'd rather stick with a higher rate than go back to Geico. If you see a commercial 100 times a day for the same company, they are not spending their money on customers. Any company that uses water or other cheap fears to make ice cream. Some ice creams don't even freeze when they're in the freezer and just stay like if it's slightly melted. Agreed. After working in ice cream for 5 years, I'm a bit of a snob. I don't buy from grocery stores anymore. I have a local farm that I'll get it from occasionally. So many companies put incredible amount of garbage in their products, as fears or preservatives. It makes the ice cream taste weird. Dodge, bought a 3 stroke 4 ton Dodge pickup in the early 70s. It had vacuum assist power steering. Every once in a while, if you turned right, the wheel would lock up and not allow you to go straight again when you should be coming out of the turn. I would end up on the sidewalk or the grass the first couple of times. I would have to shut off the engine and restart it again in order to be able to turn the wheel at all. Took it to the dealership after every incident and they could find no problem. About the fourth or fifth time I took it back, they told me to quit bringing it to them for that. Next, I wrote and called Dodge Corporate and explained the problem and that the dealership had failed and would not even try anymore. Dodge refused to even get involved in any way. I had paid cash for the truck and so could not just let them repossess it. I was afraid to sell it to anyone because of how dangerous it was to drive so I parked it on the back 40 and bought a Ford. I still have that Dodge today and anytime I notice it, it reminds me of how corrupt Dodge is. By the way Dodge, from then to this day, I have bought 7 new Ford pickup trucks. You certainly did screw me but you screwed yourselves as well. Sprint. Overpriced phones. Crappy network. Final straw was when they demolished the cell tower near my house because residents complained about the view so I had no signal inside my house then refused to give me a base station. If I can't make phone calls inside my own home I'm not going to keep my service with you. As one final parting shot they refused to unlock my phone unless I paid them for another 6 months of service. Go frick yourself. Sprint. Switch to cricket. Never been happier. I also love Sprint's recent ad campaign, our coverage is only slightly worse than what our competitors offer, so don't let that stop you from picking us. Jiffy Lube. Friends charged for an air filter that wasn't replaced. They offered me a window wash with a squeegee that I thought was just part of the service, but then they charged me $8 for it. A gas station style, exterior only wash. Lots of microtransaction type sale items that cranked a $45 oil change, at most, to $75. That was refusing the more expensive synthetic and high mileage conversions. Frick Jiffy Lube. Never again. Best Buy. Their sales practices are so shady. The last time I was in there, I bought a laptop an iPad, and some other things. As I was being rung up, the price sounded a bit off. But I figured maybe I misadded. Then the salesperson escorted me all the way to the door, holding the receipt. When she handed it to me, it had an extra charge of $100 for their tech support, something I had expressly stated I didn't want. I had to go stand in the returns line to take it off. I had to argue with the person there about why I didn't want it along with her trying to convince me why I should keep it. JC Penny. They tried to screw me over when I got my identity stolen and wouldn't work with me, like every other creditor did. They demanded full payment immediately, and when I refused, they slammed my credit report. Kick a guy when he's already down. Nice. That was over 25 years ago, and I haven't stepped inside one of their stores since. If it makes you feel better, all the JC pennies in my area are shutting down lol. A local law firm. 
My so needed to get some legal stuff done but was a little short on cash so I offered to pay for it. He was quoted less than a grand but when I got the invoice it was almost 3 times what they quoted and there were discrepancies in the billing. My so and I went to the firm and I very politely asked to speak with someone about the invoice. I made it very clear that I would pay whatever was owed but I just had a few questions about where the extra charges were coming from. The lawyer took my so aside and told him that he needed to get me under control because I was acting crazy and scaring the receptionist. They ended up taking about $500 off of the bill because we were charged twice for something. Imo there were other bogus charges but I was younger and felt intimidated. While at the time I didn't have much need for a lawyer I now run a successful business and have their competitors on retainer. For future reference, contact the state bar. They will help sort out billing disputes with a law firm. Comcast. There is and maybe prissy and probably full of but too. But at least I get the speed I pay for. Comcast won't even deliver on that. Control and F the messed up. I'm surprised this hasn't popped up yet. I've started to wait for games to drop in price or waiting for the special edition versions to come out. Much better value for my money. But I can understand those who would rather play the game when it first comes out. Anyways. The reason why I refuse to go to the messed up anymore is because almost every transaction I've had has been with someone who just won't sell me what I want. Back when GTA V was coming out, I went to get Sleeping Dogs because I hadn't played it yet. Instead of just selling me the game I needed, the cashier hounded me for not putting that money down on GTA V. At first I thought he was joking, but then he held me up for 15 minutes, even after I told him I was not interested in pre-ordering GTA V. Trying to convince me not to get Sleeping Dogs and to get GTA V. Furthermore, no. I don't want your card or to pre-order anything else. I just want the game that I know I came here for. Coles. I'm so sick of their Coles cash. Sales prices. How much you saved today inflated bulls. And don't get me started about returns, refunds, and store credit. I just want to pay a price and return my crap for that price. Not get Coles cash that expires. Or put it on my mystery Coles cash that I don't freaking know where it is or if I ever even had it. But last week I exchanged something. It was $20 cheaper than the original item. So I want my $20. Either back on the card, store credit or in cash. The clerk is like, okay thank you. I'm like where's my $20? She. Oh it's your Coles cash. Me. What Coles cash? She. You already have it. Me. I don't have anything. She, I already explained to you that your refund is Coles cash. Me, I don't have any Coles cash. How does Coles cash anticipate that I would exchange an item for $20 and appear in my pocket? She, it's on Coles cash that you already have. Me, screams internally. Something went wrong here. You are entitled to your refund in the same method of payment used. I hope you didn't just accept it and walk away. Nestle, those bastards have been lobbying for years to stop water from being a basic human right just so they can sell it in bottles. Of all the other crappy companies, Nestle is the most shittiest. Sprint, I survived over 10 rounds of layoffs only to be laid off out of the blue. Switched to T-Mobile that day and let the bill go to collections. I hope they go under, even though it will hurt KC. Frick them. Moneygram. I have no clue how they're still in business. My ex-husband was several thousand behind on child support so when he filed his federal taxes they took his whole refund and gave it to me. It was like $6,300. I try to maintain a civil respectful relationship with my ex for the sake of my children so I offered to give him back half of the tax money. He's a truck driver so I figured he could use the extra money. He happily accepts and because he is a truck driver and in a different state we decide I would send the money to him through MoneyGram since he had a bit of an urgent need for the money and wasn't sure when he'd be back in our home state. I try to send him the money in two payments. One for $2,500, one for $650. They allowed the one for $650 to go through. They wouldn't allow the bigger payment to go through though. They said I needed to answer some security questions over the phone. So I call. They ask some very personal questions about my relationship with my ex. And ask me why I'm sending him the money. I told them the truth and they didn't believe me. So said they were cancelling the transaction. 
Okay fine. I'll just wait and give it to him in person. If only it were that easy. Turns out MoneyGram went ahead and deducted the $2,500 from my account anyway. So I am on the phone with them for 3 hours, with several different people who were obviously from a foreign country. I'm in the USA. They won't give me back my money in person. Said I have to wait and get refunded on my card. But they won't give me a reference number and say it could be 10 business days or more before I see the money back. So I've been waiting 4 weeks to get this money back and have no clue when it'll be returned. I've looked up reviews on them and apparently this is very common. And they will take your money even while denying a transaction and then keep it for however long they want. I have no idea what to do now. No clue when or if I'll get the $2,500 back. I feel really bad for people who send money in an emergency and have this happen because their money can be held up for weeks with no way to get access to it. I'm absolutely furious at MoneyGram. What the actual freak. I get they try to weed out people who might be sending money out to scammers, etc. But the fact they took the money anyways is crazy. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.